more of just an educational video on why in the world you would want to use freshly milled flour or why you'd want to grind it yourself in the first place. I get that question a lot because people say, well, you can buy flour at the store. Can't you just get good organic whole wheat flour and make these bread recipes that I do? And yes, technically you can do that. Uh, any of the recipes that I give, they have really been uh, adapted to fresh flour because that is a whole different ballgame when you're baking than with white flour. But you can convert the recipes using all-purpose flour. I always say that I'm not really encouraging that because there's so much food value in fresh flour that when you use store-bought flour, you really miss that. Um, so just a real brief history is basically back in the 1800s, everyone milled their own grain. They didn't have home mills, but they usually had a mill locally. So they would go and grind, they would take the grain that they had grown, grown which was wheat or corn, and they would actually go and get that milled as they needed it. They really weren't able to store it for very long because it contained all of the germ and the oil and everything that was in the actual kernel once it was ground. So they didn't have the purpose of storing it, so they went regularly. They might get enough flour ground for the week or maybe a little more, but generally that was about it because fresh flour is alive and there's no preservatives or chemicals in it. And so that is why you would have to mill it yourself. So anyway, this part is the reason that today we want to do that is about in the early 1900s, there was a quest for fluffy light flour. And so basically people began to transition where at one time only the wealthy could have white flour. That was something that was considered to be more elite in the culture and the peasants or normal everyday people had the stone milled grains. And actually they lived a lot longer because of that too. But anyway, there was this quest that it was somehow equated with the rise in culture and social status if you had flour that was fluffier and lighter. So in the 1900s, they kind of remedied that and the whole bulk of people would be able to have white flour or really fluffy light cakes and desserts. And the way they did it is exactly like they did it for the upper class before that time, is they would actually mill the grain and then they would separate it all out. So they're gonna take this wheat kernel, run it through the meal, which has all of these vitamins and nutrients in it. And then they separated out the bran and the germ, which is the outer hull of these little wheat berries. And they would keep basically essentially the endosperm or the very center of the grain. And then the bran and the germ, they actually sold to farmers. Uh, they used it to feed to their cattle and to their pigs. It seemed like a great idea because people were able to make money on the flour and they were able to make money on the germ and the, and the bran separately. So it was very lucrative. The problem was it didn't take very long after they separated out the flour to find that the hospitals were full of people who had d mental conditions that they had never experienced before. Um, pellagra, beriberi, all these health conditions began to arise. And so they said, okay, wait a minute, what's changed? And they were like, well, all the flowers changed. So what can we do about that? And what they realized was when they removed the bran and the germ from the whole wheat berries, they actually removed the B vitamins. Um, the thymine and the riboflavin and all of those B vitamins were removed. And that is what helps people have mental clarity. And so they said, okay, hold up. We can't have everybody going crazy. So let's add back the B vitamins. So they removed about 26 vitamins and minerals that are present in whole grain. And they gave back two to four. And they called it enriched bread. Fortified with vitamins and minerals, meaning that they took, oh, they had a way to make synthetic vitamins and minerals and they put just enough back in the flour to keep people from going crazy and to also have some of the other health problems that they came up with. And then they market it and still market it today as enriched flour. So I don't know about you, but if you took 26 vitamins and minerals away from something that I have and you put back two to four fake ones, I don't feel like you enrich the product very much. So it was all in advertising. 
and it worked very well because here we are in 2020 and we still buy enriched fortified flour but it really doesn't have any kind of a nutritional panel like whole grain does anything that you see on the back of a flour package or a bread package as far as the nutrition panel that's only relevant if you've actually started with fresh flour because those vitamins and minerals that are listed oxidize very quickly so if I put this into my grain mill and I grind some and I make this flour the vitamin E and the 26 wonderful vitamins and minerals that are in this are going to be in this when I bake with it. And when I bake with it, they don't go away. They're actually locked in. The heat doesn't destroy those vitamins and minerals, which is the way that the Lord took care of us. So you're able to grind your flour, bake your bread, and still have all of the nutrition in it. And so basically when they removed the, the germ and the bran, it helped them to have a, long, a longer shelf life for the product. And in that, there was a big trade-off. So I have a lot of people in my office, and, and when I owned a bakery years ago, that say, oh, I have a gluten issue. I'm gluten intolerant. I have, I have this or I have that. And I very much know those are real conditions, but oftentimes, it's really not the gluten's fault. <laughs> it's more about the flour that we're eating in the store. So I often say to people that come into my office as clients and they're trying to get their nutrition and health on board um, in their wellness journey, I say, well, if the only bread that you can get access to or have access to is from the grocery store, even the best organic bread that you can buy, you're probably better off just doing without the bread. Um, but I say that thinking that don't do without the bread because it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Real living bread that you make yourself from flour that you grind, which is really not a big deal, has so much nutrition in it. Literally 90% of the vitamins and minerals that your body and my body need to thrive are in whole grains. And if you just take and toss that out and say gluten's a bad guy, so we're getting rid of all grain, you're throwing out your B vitamins. The most concentrated source of vitamin E known to man is in wheat berries, in grain. So that is important because vitamin E is what helps your cells to, it's an antioxidant. It keeps them from oxidizing and it keeps your cells healthy, which is what protects you from high cholesterol and diabetes and it helps with weight management and colon cancer prevention and breast cancer prevention and the list goes on and on and this video is supposed to be short so I'm not going to keep going but um, anyway the cool thing about this grain is they have actually found grain the Kamut grain that is actually an Egyptian grain was found in tombs originally this is so cool and they actually found it when they know it was at least 2,000 years old sealed in tombs and they got it out and they planted it. And they thought, oh, well, let's try. Well, it grew, and that is where we get the kamut that we have today, which is why it's not been hybridized, because that literally was all the grain that there was. So the amazing thing that God did in providing for us is he said, okay, I'm gonna have this awesome, living, real, whole food, and I'm gonna keep everything preserved in its container, in the little shell. And it's not going to be disturbed unless you crack it. And so when you mill this, you actually have access to all of the goodness that's inside of that wheat berry or any other kind of grain, rice, or beans even. And so you have access to the life-giving nutrition in it. So that's one thing that's extremely cool. There's so much there. And this is, like I said, supposed to be a short video, so I'm wrapping it up. But if you grind the flour within 24 hours 90 percent of the nutrition is gone so up to 36 hours there's really not anything left in it that hasn't oxidized so people say to me well can i grind flour my friend has a grain mill and can i just grind flour and put it in the freezer you can but you will lose some of the the nutrition that's in it even in the freezer so if you're gonna actually do this and you're gonna be committed to it it's great to purchase a grain mill and there's so many different kinds available now and that way you have access to the flour you can mill it when you need it and use it so that it has the most nutrition available the other thing and I'll end with this is that 
Roundup and herbicides are sprayed heavily on grains. And that is why you want to try to stick to an organic source of grain. Chemical free, which I did for years, uh, and then my husband was diagnosed with leukemia several years ago, and it kind of rocked our world because it had a direct connection to the amount of glyphosate or Roundup that he had in his blood. And here we were eating all this food that was so good for us, and I didn't know at the time that I wasn't buying organic grains, and they actually spray heavily grains to get them to produce. And Roundup and glyphosate and herbicides are not compatible with the human body and health. And so we made a transition a few years ago where I just went to all organic grains. It is more expensive, but not in the long run because health is worth a lot more than that. And thankfully, my husband is completely healed of leukemia. We thank the Lord for that. And I thank the Lord that we're starting to see that there's a different way to do things, even than what we thought we were doing, which was really good. This is always a living, breathing thing when you're trying to be healthy. And so you learn stuff as you go and you change stuff as you go. But anyway, that's just a brief little class. There is so much to learn about nutri nutrition and whole grains. And I have a blog on my website if you want to go to healthywithhappysperling.com. And then I also have this YouTube channel. So please subscribe below and hit the notification bell because I do try to post videos once or twice a week. Thank you so much for watching.